Hello learners, welcome to NIOS. I am Dr. Sonali Singh from Rismex College of Education. Today we will discuss about your kingdom Animalia that is a part of your biology course at senior secondary level. Now I'll discuss about the general features of kingdom Animalia. These are multicellular eukaryotes that is they contain a nucleus and organelles and are enclosed by a plasma membrane. They have ingestive means the process of absorbing nutrients heterotrophic nutrition. They have the power of locomotion. They show increased sensitivity through nervous systems. Now we'll discuss the basis of classification of animals. Uh, the uh, criteria which is being on which they are being classified is your organization. Second is symmetry. Third is body cavity. Fourth is number of embryonic cell layers and presence or absence of notochord are the features used for distinguishing, uh, distinguishing broad categories of animals. The first part on which we distinguish our animal uh, kingdom is organization. Bodies of animals are multicellular although cells may or may not be organized into tissues and organ systems. Animals such as sponges are aggregates of cells. These are at cellular level of organization. Nidarians have groups of cells performing specialized functions. They are at tissue level of organization. All other animals have organs and systems for performing body functions. They are at organ system grade. The second criteria is your symmetry. It means dividing the body into two equal and identical parts. Now again here sponges are asymmetrical. Nidaria and Echinoderma larvae are radially symmetrical. All other animals are bilaterally symmetrical or dorsiventral. That is one that has two surfaces different from each other in appearance and structure. The third criteria is body cavity or coelom. It's a cavity between the body wall and food canal. It is not present in a coelomates. A means no and coelom means body cavity. But it is present in eucelomates. EU means U means true. Again, we have the third type of uh, criteria, animals that are pseudocelomes. Pseudo means false. That is, they do not have a true body cavity. For example, in round worms, they are pseudocelomic, having pseudocelom cavity. The third criteria on which we divide our uh, animals is embryonic layers. Three layers of cells, that is ectoderm, mesoderm, and the innermost endoderm in the embryo. These are called as the germinal layers. These give rise to various parts of the body of the animals. Sponges and nidaria do not have mesoderm in their embryos. They have only two germinal layers that is ectoderm and endoderm and that's why they are called as diploblastic. Others have three germinal layers. It means that they have ectoderm, mesoderm as well as endoderm and they are termed as triploblastic. The fourth criteria on which we divide our animal kingdom is notochord, means its presence or absence. Now it's a solid found in embryonic stage or adults of some animals which are grouped as in phylum chordata. All animal groups lacking notochord are termed as non-chordates. This kingdom is further divided into two subkingdoms. The first subkingdom is parazoa. Parazoa is in it, there is no symmetry and it has no tissues. It is also divided into following subphylums. The first phylum that we will study about this subkingdom parazoa is your phylum porifera. It has a tissue grade of organization and has only two embryonic germ layers. It means that it is diploblastic. It is a coelomate, has no coelom, no body cavity, no coelom. Notochord may or may not be present. It is asymmetrical. Now your phylum porifera that includes sponja has several characteristics. It's a body with many pores, canals or chambers through which water flows is in, uh, called as the canal system. It has a large aperture called osculum at the upper end and its body encloses a large cavity called spongoseal. It has no organs, movable parts or appendages. Different kinds of cells perform different kinds of functions. Usually it has an internal skeleton of calcareous or siliceous spicules or of spongin fibers or both. Reproduction is asexual that is by budding and when the sexual reproduction takes place it's uh, almost in all marine animals. Example cycon, euplectella, euspongia etc. The second phylum that we are going to discuss is your phylum nidaria. This is an example of pseudocelomates. 
that it, it has a false thelom, it has a radial symmetry, it includes hydroids, jellyfishes, as from the figure it was very clear, it is high, uh, examples are hydra, sea animal and corals. Now what are the main characteristics of this phylum? It has a body with no head and no segmentation. Body wall is two layered, external epidermis and inner gastrodermis. It's a jelly-like non-cellular mesogly in between. It functions in hydrostatic skeleton. Nidoblast or stinging cells are present that helps it to catch the prey because it's carnivorous in nature. Skeleton is calcareous, horny or sometimes none is present in it. Asexual reproduction takes place by budding that is in the polyp stage or sessile stage and sexual reproduction takes place in free swimming stage and that stage is called as medusa stage. So it has two stages in which the reproduction goes on. One is your sessile stage or polyp stage and the other one is your medusa stage. It has a radial symmetry. All are marine except hydra which is found in fresh water. Either it is fixed like hydra, sea anemones and corals or sometimes it exists in free floating like the jellyfish. Now the third phylum that we are going to discuss is phylum Platyhelminthes. It's, it has no coelom, it is asymmetrical, notochord may be or may not be present. For example, flatworms come in your phylum Platyhelminthes. Now what are the main characters uh, of the animals that are present inside this phylum? Uh, first of all, it, they have an elongated body, soft bodied, dorsoventrally flattened worms without true segmentation. There is no body cavity, suckers or hooks or both for attachment to the body of the host. Sexes are usually united. Mostly sexual reproduction occurs with asexual reproduction in some. Elementary canal has only one opening that is your mouth in some forms, example tapeworms. There is no elementary canal at all in your tapeworm. A few are free living but mostly they are parasites. Example is uh, for free living uh, platyhelminthes, the example is planaria. Uh, fasciola, that is in normal language we call it as a liver fluke, is a parasite. Or sheep liver, tinea, that is your tapeworm, is a parasite, is again a parasite on the human intestine. We are present in the human intestine. The next phylum that we are going to discuss is your phylum Ascalminthes. It belongs to the class Nematoda. It has a false coelom, notochord is absent, so it is non-chordata. Examples, round worms and thread, worm, thread worms. They have an elongated cylindrical round body. Body cavity is of a form of pseudosolom that is false body cavity. Elementary canal in it opens at the two ends. They have mouth and anus. Sexes are separate in them. Males are smaller in comparison to the females. They are mostly parasitic in nature, but some of them live freely in the soil. Ascaris is a common roundworm parasitic in nature and is found in the intestine of humans. Pinworm and Buscheria, that is your filaria worm, are some other examples of it. Now the third phylum that we are going to discuss is phylum Annelid. That is, it includes earthworms. They are elongated, segmented, coelomate. Now the first thing that is they are coelomate. They, it means that uh, they have a true body cavity, worm-like animals. Body is provided with setae or parapodia for locomotion. Means their legs are being termed as parapodia from with help of which they move from one place to other. They have a well-developed digestive system with the alimentary canal opening at both the ends. Excretory system in it are called as nephridia. Sexes are united as in the case of earthworm means male and female are present in a single earthworm or separate as in the case of nereis. Regeneration is quite frequent in uh, case of phylum Annelida. They are aquatic, some are terrestrial animals, some live in tubes and some are even parasitic. Some examples of the uh, worms belonging to this phylum are nereis, earthworms like ferritima that lives freely in the soil and hirudinaria. Now the next phylum which we are going to discuss is your orthopoda. It includes crabs, scorpion, insects, spiders, etc. These animals or these uh, insects have segmented body and can be differentiated into head, thorax and abdomen. It means their body is divided into three parts, head, thorax and abdomen. Head and thorax are often fused, means they are not so well defined differentiated and they are fused to form cephalothorax. 
they have jointed legs for locomotion one pair each on some or all body segments their exoskeleton is of uh, made up of chitinous cuticle shed at intervals this process is called as molting now their sexes are completely usually separate orthopods are further divided into further uh, divided into uh, four classes that is first is crustacea the second is myropida third is insecta and fourth is arachnida now we'll discuss all these three classes one by one in detail your first class is arachnida this uh, type of insects have cephalothorax with two calicurae or calicuri that is the pair of appendages in front of the mouth they have three pedipalpi these are the second pair of appendages and the last they have four pairs of walking legs its abdomen is usually without legs eyes are simple sexes are separate in them and the example is scorpion the second class which we will discuss about these insect is your crustacea it has a body with dorsal covering called carapace it has a cephalothorax cephalothorax again means in which your cephalothorax are being fused together thorax and abdomen are fused together it has 13 pairs of legs in appendages sexes are usually separate and eyes are compound the example of the insect belonging to this family crustacea is your prawn the third class that we will discuss uh, in this phylum is your class myriopoda it has a body with numerous segments each segment bearing one to two pairs of legs terrestrial and air breathing orthopods eyes are compound sexes are, are again separate and the example is millipede or scalopendra the fourth type is fourth class in fact is your insecta class the body is divisible into head thorax and abdomen thorax is divided into three segments with three pairs of legs in each segment usually they have two pairs of wings on the last two thoracic segments eyes are again compound sexes again separate example is cockroach now the next phylum that we are going to discuss is your phylum mollusca it includes your squids snails oysters in it these animals have a soft unsegmented body with a hard calcareous shell to protect the soft body they have a muscular foot to help in locomotion and also to act as a weapon in some cases some of the examples of these fish are uh, snails slugs oyster mussels clams squids octopuses now what are the main characteristics of the animals belonging to this phylum they have an unsegmented soft body means these are unsegmented soft body animals some of them are terrestrial and some of them are aquatic exoskeleton is in the form of a shell when present shell is usually univalve or bivalve internal shell is also present in some animals sexes are separate or united they have a muscular foot for locomotion the next phylum which we will discuss today is your echinodermata it includes your starfish brittle star sea urchin sea cucumber etc these all are marine animals with unsegmented body head is absent body surface is marked with five radiating areas they have a radial symmetry endoskeleton of dermal calcareous or cycles with spines is present in them they move by tube feet sexes are usually separate regeneration of lost parts is a peculiarity means they show the regeneration process adults are radially symmetrical but the larvae are bilaterally symmetrical the next phylum that we are going to discuss is your phylum chordata the main characteristics of this phylum chordata is that notochord is present at some stage of life in most cases it is replaced by a backbone the dorsal tubular nerve cord is also present gill slits are present at some stage of light maybe in a larva stage or in an adult stage body is with a head and trunk and two pair of appendages are present in it it has three subphylums these three subphylums are eurochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata in your subphylum uh, eurochordata notochord is present only in the larval stage body is bag shaped covered by a particular tunic or testa in adult stage limbs are absent dorsal tubular nerve cord is present in the larval forms and is reduced in the adult form example of this subphylum is euro is your hardmania the second subphylum that we'll discuss is your cephalochordata 
Now again, notochord and nerve cord remain present throughout the life and extend through the entire length of the body. Body is elongated and flattened from the sides. Limbs or paired fins are present in it. They have a dorsal tubular nerve cord in adult form. Example, amphioxus. The third one is your saphylum vertebrata. Notochord is replaced by vertebral column that is the backbone which we call in the general terminology. We have the body with well developed heads, paired fins or limbs. It's cartilaginous or bony endoskeleton. Paired limbs are present in it. Dorsal tubular nerve cord is present which is divided into the brain and spinal cord. And examples are all the animals with the backbone. Now this phylum vertebrata is uh, divided, uh, it has a notochord which is uh, replaced by a vertebral column. It has two super classes, agnatha that is your jawless vertebrate and nathostomata that is your jawed vertebrate. Agnatha, agnatha means A means no and nathos means jaw. So there is no jaw present in them. And the second super class is your nathostomata. Nathostomata means jawless vertebrates or jawed vertebrates. It, could, it is your basically your jawed vertebrate. Now your super class nathostomata is further divided into six classes. First is chondrichthys, the second is osteochthys, the third class is amphibia, the fourth is reptilia, the fifth one comes to be aves and the sixth class is mammalia. The first two classes that is chondrichthys and osteochthys include the fish. Fish means they are cartilaginous and bony fish. Fish are the aquatic animals, gill breathing and move with the help of scales. Now chondrichthys. Chondro means cartilage and ithys means fish. So your chondrichthys means cartilaginous fish. Its mouth is ventral, tail is heterocircle. What is heterocircle? Means those fishes who have tails having the upper lobe larger than the lower one with the vertebral column extending into the upper lobe. Their skeleton is cartilaginous and they have five to seven pair of gills. Operculum means gill cover is absent in them. Example, dogfish or scolidon. Now the second class is osteochythys. Os means bone and ichythys means fish. So a bony fish basically. Now in this, this type of fish has a mouth, terminal mouth and the tail is, uh, your tail is homocircle. It means the tail that appears outwardly symmetrical but with the backbone passing the lobe. Skeleton is bony. They have four pairs of gill and in it operculum is present. Example, labio or rohu. Now the third class which we are going to discuss today is your class amphibia. Amphi means double or both. And bios means life on land as well as in water. Means, have you heard of the frog? Frog lives in land as well as in the water. So this belongs to your class amphibia and they are termed as amphibians. The animals partly live in water and partly they live in land. Skin is smooth or sometimes it's rough. They are rich in glands. They have two pairs of limb, pentadectyle. Pentadectyle means five-fingered. Digits without claws. Body is with a distinct head and trunk and they have no neck. Two nostrils opening into the buccal cavity. Tympanum is present on the surface of the body wall. They lay their eggs in water. In the early stage of life, that is their larva stage, they breathe by the means of gills. But when they turn into adults, they breathe by lungs. This you can understand with the help of example. When the frog is in uh, its early stage of life means in the form of a toad, it breathes through gills. And when it turns into frog, it breathes through lungs. Their heart is three-chambered. Larval stage is single-tailed and aquatic. Some are tailed as in the case of salamander. And some are tailless. Example, frog and toad. Some of the examples of uh, this uh, class amphibian are salamandra, proteus, rana, that is your frog or bufo toad which you normally call it. The next class which we are going to discuss here is class reptilia. Reptilia, it is derived from the word reptier. Reptier means to crawl. They are four-legged or legless crawling animals whose body is covered by scales and they, leg, they lay their eggs on land. Some of the characteristic features of the animals belonging to this class reptilia is that they are terrestrial. Terrestrial means they live on land. Some are aquatic, means they live in water. Body is covered with horny scales. Skin is often dry. They have paired pentadectyle limbs. Snakes do not have limbs. Means uh, this uh, pentadectyle paired limbs are absent in snakes. With clawed digits. 
Tympanum is small and depressed and it is absent even in snakes. Respiration takes place by lungs. Heart is again three chambered but with a partially, partially divided ventricle that is it is four chambered in crocodile as in the case of a crocodile. Their legs have leathery shell. Some of the examples of animals belonging to this class reptilia is tortoise, turtles, garden lizard, wall lizard, cobra, crocodile, ghadial, etc. Now the next class that we are going to discuss is your class aves. Aves is derived from the word avis which means birds. Some of the characteristic features of these uh, uh, of the birds belonging to the class aves is that they are warm blooded means homeothermal. Some, uh, also it is also called as endothermal that is their body temperature remains constant. Body is covered with feathers, scales are present only on the hind limbs and their body is divisible into three parts again head, neck and trunk. They have jaws with horny beak and teeth are not present in them. Hind limbs with four digits adapted for perching, walking or swimming. Birds are able to perch, to walk, to hop and even they can swim. Bones with air spaces to make the skeleton light that is they have pneumatic bones. Forelimbs are modified into wings for hind flight for flight. When they fly their forelimbs uh, actually in their structure their forelimbs are modified into the wings so that they can fly. Heart is four chamber chambered lungs for respiration connected with air sacs. Voice box or syrinx as in called uh, in terms of here in the case of your aves is present at the junction of trachea and bronchi. Only left ovary and oviduct is present in the females. All are oviparous that is they lay eggs. Eggs are have much of yolk and calcareous shell. Some of the examples are ostrich, kiwi, columbia that is your pigeon, crow etc. Now the next class that we are going to discuss is class mammalia. Mamma means breast. The characteristic features of this class is that body is covered with hair and they have presence of mammary glands which provides milk to their offsprings. Sweat and oil glands are present in the skin. Body is divisible into head, neck, trunk and tail. Trail is absent in some. Projecting external ears or we call them as spina is present. Digits usually ending in claws, nails and hooves. Dentition is thicodont that is, that is teeth in sockets of jaw bones. Teeth are present in sockets of jaw bones and generally heterodont that is of four different types of teeth they have. They have seven neck vertebrae, homeothermal, warm blooded and heart is four chambered. Testes are extra abdominal and in scrotal sacs. Viviparous they give birth to the young, some primitive mammals are oviparous that is they lay eggs. Fetus is nourished by mother through placenta. It is further divided into three subclasses, class, subclass prototheria, subclass metatheria and subclass eutheria. Now your subclass eutheria has been divided into further orders. The first order is your order rodentia. These are herbivorous and terrestrial animals. Incisors are long, sharp and chisel shaped. Forelimbs are shorter than the hind limbs. Example rat and squirrel. The second order which we will discuss is your chiroptera. These are flying animals, four limbs are adapted for flight, skin is folded that is patagium works as wing. Hind limbs are thin and short, they are nocturnal means they are active at night. Bats have a very poor eyesight, they avoid colliding against objects by echolocation in which the bat emits supersonic waves which are reflected back from the objects and the bat can perceive the reflected waves to determine the position of the object. This method is in fact very similar to your radar way of functioning. The third order which we are going to discuss is your carnivora as you all are very well aware of the carnivorous animals. These are flesh eating mammals. They have large pointed and sharp canines to tear the flesh. Fingers are present with sharp claws. Some of the examples of carnivora are lion, tiger, cat, dog etc. The fourth order that we will discuss is your primates. Primates have highly developed brain. Eyes are set forward in the head to provide binocular that is depth perception vision. The neck is mobile. Limbs have five digits with flat nails. The thumb of the hand and the greater toe of the feet are opposable that it helps them for grasping things. Two thoracic mammae that is breast are present. Some of the example of primates are monkeys, apes and we human beings or man. The fifth order that we are going to discuss is cetacea. These are aquatic animals. Four limbs are changed into paddles. They have no neck, neck 
fish like shape but respiration by lungs the example of this uh, mammal is whale the next order which we will discuss is proboscidea these are large herbivorous terrestrial animals in it the fusion of upper lip and nose to form a long mobile trunk only one pair of incisor in upper jaw is present which form huge tusks in male example is your elephant the next order which we are going to discuss is your ungulata these are hoofed mammals herbivores usually domesticated by man they have mammy with in a, our abdominal with teats example deer cows sheep etc so learners today we discussed about the kingdom animalia their phylum sub phylums further into classes and orders i hope you would have understood it thank you hello learners welcome to nios i am dr sonali singh from rajnex college of education today we will discuss about the biology course at senior secondary level in which we will study or discuss about your kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia now first we will study about kingdom plantae what are plants plants are multicellular eukaryotic photosynthetic autotrophs multicellular means made up of various types of cells and the word eukaryotic means an organism whose cells contain a nucleus surrounded by a membrane and whose dna is bound together by proteins into chromosomes the cells of eukaryotes also contain an endoplasmic reticulum and numerous specialized organelles not present in prokaryotes especially mitochondria golgi bodies etc autotrophs or producers as we generally call is an organism that produces complex organic compounds such as carbohydrates fats and proteins from simple substances present in its surroundings generally using energy from light now this whole process is called as photosynthesis now your kingdom plantae is classified into following divisions first bryophyta second teredophyta and the third is spermatophyta The first one bryophyta are also called as amphibians of plant kingdoms and are non-vascular that is they don't have xylem and phloem on the other hand teredophyta have true roots stem and leaves and vascular tissue is present that is they have xylem and phloem as conductive tissues moving on to the third one sper uh, spermatophyta they are your seed producing plants and vascular tissues are present inside them These spermatophyta are further divided into gymnospermy as well as angiospermy. Now what are gymnosperms? Gymnosperms are naked seeded plants in which the seeds are not enclosed in an ovary. Whereas on the other side angiosperms have the seeds which are enclosed in the ovary wall. They are further divided into two parts, dicotyledons and the second part is monocotyledons. Dicotyledons means it consists of embryo with two cotyledons. and monocotyledon has a single cotyledon in the embryo now we will discuss about uh, all these parts one by one in detail the first one that comes to be uh, in front of you is visible is bryophyta or bryophytes bryophytes are also called as amphibians of plant kingdom because though they live in soil still they need water for sexual reproduction as you know we have frogs and all those which we term as uh, amphibians why because they live in uh, soil as well as they need water for their survival so these bryophytes are also called as amphibians of your plant kingdom the sperms of these bryophyte are flagellate and need water to swim to the x they are the embryophytes that do not have their own vascular tissues means that they don't have xylem for phloem as a conducting tissues whereas multicellular sporophytes are always born on the gametophyte bryophytes have no true leaves and roots as their independent body is gametophytic or haploid now what is haploid a haploid is a cell or organism that has a single set of chromosomes that are not paired the haploid gamete is normally produced during plant cell division and it has only half the number of chromosomes as in diploid in uh, bryophytes the sex organs are jacketed as they are always surrounded by one or several layers of sterile cells there are three main types of bryophytes now the from the figure it is very clear uh, that this is the thallus shape of bryophyte male and female part of um, liverwort is visible to you which is a part of your bryophyte now the first is flat ribbon like liverworts the second one is a small leafy plant like body that is your mosses or funaria 
Now the flat ribbon like uh, bryophyte is your liverwort. The second one is a small leafy plant body that is your mosses or we can call it as funaria also. The third one is flat thyloid undifferentiated vegetative tissue plant body bearing a horn like sporophyte is the diploid multicellular stage in the life cycle of a plant or an alga. It develops from the zygote produced when a haploid egg cell is fertilized by haploid sperm and each sporophyte has a double set of chromosomes, one set from each parent. Example is hornwort or anthoceros. In all these types of uh, bryophytes, the main plant body is a gametophyte, larger and more persistent and photosynthetically active that bears the sex organs. In mosses, as uh, the case of example is, the gametophytic plant body is a leafy system called gametophore, but in liverworts or hornworts, the plant body is usually a thallus, which was already shown to you in a figure having different types of male thallus as well as female thallus. It's a ribbon-like or heart-shaped and bilaterally symmetrical structure. The body is without roots, stems and leaves. The plants are anchored to the soil by rhizots, which are unicellular in liverworts and hornworts and multicellular in mosses. The male sex organs are anthridia and female sex organs are called as archegonia. The gametes are produced in the sex organs. Male and female gametes fuse to give rise to a zygote, which develops into a sporophyte. This sporophyte remains attached to the gametophyte and depends on it for foods and mineral. The sporogenous tissue in the sporophyte undergoes meiosis. It's the type of cell division that results in four daughter cells, each with the half number of chromosomes of the parent cell as in the production of gametes and plant spores to produce haploid spores. The spores on dispersal germinate to give rise to a gametophyte again. Now what is a gametophyte? This undergoes mitosis, that is your gamete producing phase of the plant. Whereas your sporophyte always undergoes meiosis and produces spores. This can be termed as a spore producing phase of plants. The bryophytes are the pioneers of the vegetation. That is, they are the first one to grow on various habitats like rock, lava, sand, water and they act as soil binders. <coughs> now, when we come on to the comparison of these two phases, your gametophytic phase and sporophytic phase, then your gametophytic phase is haploid phase, generally autotrophic, it produces gametes and these gametes are produced by mitosis. Whereas in your sporophytic phase, this is a diploid phase, heterotrophic or partially autotrophic. It always produces spores as from the word sporophytic it is very clear and these spores are produced by meiosis. So main difference that comes out in these two phases is the process of division that is mitosis and meiosis. Now we move on to the next part of the plant kingdom that is your pteridophyta or pteridophytes. Pteridophytes are fern plant, ferns are lower vascular plants, they contain vascular tissues which is made up of xylem and phloem and helps in conduction of water and nutrients to all parts of the plant body. Learners, you know that xylem is responsible for the conduction of water and phloem is responsible for the conduction of nutrients to the various parts of the plant body. The main plant body represents a sporophytic, that is diploid. It means cells containing two sets of chromosomes, one from each parent generation and has roots which penetrate the soil to absorb water and minerals. The leaves or we can call fronds in the case of pteridophytes of this sporophyte grow on thick horizontal underground stem or rhizome which bears adventitious roots. The young leaves and the bases of fronds are covered by dry, dry brown scales that is called as rementa. The young leaves and leaflets are fascinately coiled structures. The axis of the leaves is called as rachis and the leaflets on both sides of rachis are called pinnae. The division of pinnae are known as pinules. On the under surface of the leaves, there develops a spore producing body called sporangia in groups or you can call it as a sori. In singular, we can say it or pronounce it as sorus, which may or may not be covered by multicellular structure called indusium. This sporogenous tissue in the sporangia undergoes meiosis to produce haploid spores. These spores on dispersal germinate into an independent small thallus-like body, the gametophyte called as prothallus. Now, this is the prothallus that bears your male and female gametes. 
the male gametes are termed as anthridia and female gametes are called as archegonia the gametes fuse and zygote develops into a diploid sporophyte the young embryo absorbs nutrients and water from the gametophyte until its roots and leaves are formed this gametophyte then dies out gametophyte grows independent of sporophyte both have their own identities but it lives for a very short period of time and a new sporophyte is temporarily dependent upon a tiny gametophyte now we move on to the next part of the plant kingdom that is your gymnosperms gymnosperm is derived from the word gymnose and sperms gymnose means naked and sperm sperma or spermy means seed so the plants which have the naked seeds now the gymnosperm may bear naked ovules on the flat scale leaves called ovuliferous scales which are not enclosed in carpels or ovary the ovuliferous scales are arranged in the form of cones these are termed as their fruits now we will discuss the characteristics of gymnosperms the adult plant or called sporophyte is a tall woody perennial tree or shrub mostly evergreen the stem is usually branched but sometimes as in the case of cycas it remains unbranched leaves may be simple as in the case of pinus or leaves could be compound as in the case of cycas leaves may be dimorphic or of one kind only foliage leaves are large green simple or pinnately compound needle like and grow on dwarf shoot as in the case of pinus or they are directly borne on the main trunk as in case of cycas scale leaves are brown and simple vascular bundles in stem are arranged in a ring and show secondary growth now your these gymnosperms bear cones which are usually unisexual uh, sexual that is either male cone or female cone pollen grains are haploid produced in microsporangia of the male cones in pinus each pollen grain has two large sacs called wings to help in the dispersal by wind pollen grains produce two male gametes ovules are not enclosed in ovary but are born naked on leafy megasporophylls of female cone so the term gymnosperms or the naked seeds come into existence ovules are produced side by side inside which female gamete or egg is produced the female gamete fuses with the male gamete in the ovule the fertilized ovule then develops into the seed as in the case of pinus or any other cedar cedrus jupiter juniperus redwood all these are the examples of gymnosperms that exist in our environment these are the examples of cones of gymnosperms now we move on to the next family of the plants that is your angiospermy it includes most familiar plants like pea mangoes coconut wheat and rice that we see around us it's a typical flowering plant seeds are always enclosed in the fruit which is a mature fertilized ovary the angiosperms are divided into two main groups or classes first is your dicotyledon as i told you earlier and the second one is monocotyledon dicot plants have two cotyledons in seeds whereas monocot plants have only one cotyledon within the seeds and it bears seeds that are enclosed in the fruits now we'll discuss some of the families of angiospermy first you can go through the uh, picture of angiospermy which uh, shows a normal grown plant having all the parts right from the root tap shoot to the shoot system roots are present inside the soil whereas the uh, flowering plant and the leaves grow above the soil now you can look uh, into the monocot seed as well as dicot seeds what is the difference between them in monocot seeds uh, it has radical seed coat epicotyle hypocotyle everything whereas in minor in your dicot seeds uh, it uh, though they have the same parts uh, but in two uh, ways they are present inside it in your monocot and dicot stem when we compare uh, between these two stems they have epidermis at the external epidermis hypodermis they are the three layers that are being present endodermis whereas in your monocot stem epidermis and the second one is termed as hypodermis after that there are vascular bundles and then we have ground tissues now we'll discuss about the families that under come uh, they are involved in your angiosperm included in your families of angiosperms now we'll discuss one by one the each family the first family is your fabiaceae family or papilionaceae it's a dicotyledonous family 
the plant and herbs or shrubs are rarely trees flowers are zygomorphic it means that a flower can be cut into two equal halves only through one radius your flowers are bisexual they are complete the calyx consists of five sepals and these are jointed corolla comprises of five petals and it is polypetalous papillonaceous in shape or butterfly shaped there is a large petal called standard two smaller ones called as wings and the two interior small cones one or less jointed forming the keel androecium has 10 stamens arranged in two whorls and and your arrangement criteria is 9 plus 1 that is it is diadelphous having its stamen fused together at least partly by the filament condition gynoecium is superior it's monocarpulary that is it consists of single carpel unilocular it means it has a single chamber with many ovules arranged in on a marginal placenta some examples of the family fabius uh, is pea groundnut soya bean lentils chickpea green gram etc now we will discuss about uh, another dicot family that is malvesi the plants may be herbs shrubs or trees flowers are pentamerous that is all whorls have members that are five or multiples of five and your flowers are actinomorphic means that it can be divided into two equal halves through any radius apicalyx is present as an additional whorl of bracteole just below the calyx calyx has five sepals that may be free or joined at the base corolla has five petals and they are usually free the male part androecium consists of indefinite numbers of monodelphous stamens the lower parts or filaments join together to form a staminal tube gynoecium consists of five carpels its ovary is syncarpous as well as superior its pentalocular having axile placenta fruit is a capsule some of the examples of plants belonging to family malvesi is hibiscus or in hindi you call it as gudhal then we have cotton lady finger etc now the third family that we will discuss is your liliaceae family it's a monocot family these are mostly perennial herbs the stem is a rhizome or bulb like structure leaves may be fleshy colline that is around uh, rising from the underground stem flowers are bisexual again actinomorphic mostly trimerous trimerous means that all the whorls have either three units or multiples of three and your flowers are hypogynous perianth is a large petiole means corolla alike usually six arranged in two whorls of three each free and united stamens usually six that is in the combination of 3 plus 3 in two whorls situated opposite to the perianth lobes carpels are three in number it's a syncarpous means carpels are fused together by their styles or stigmas but possess different ovaries ovary is superior presentation is axile and that this is that type of presentation in which carpels are folded inwards with ovules packed inside along the central axis of ovary fruit is usually a capsule uh, some of the examples of this are shatavar or satmuli you call it tulip kalihari lily onion grithkumari the next family that we are going to discuss is another cotyledonous monocotyledonous family or herbs that is your family poaceae family poaceae is a monocotyledonous family the plants are herbs or rarely woody as in the case of sugarcane it's a spike of spikelets for example wheat a small spikelet may contain not more than 5 flowers flowers are very small in incons- inconspicuous with scale like structures stamens are three sometimes six as in the case of rice and bamboo three carpels are present in it its syncarpous unilocular ovary superior bearing a single basal ovule fruit is caryopsis that is the seed coat and ovary wall are inseparably fused some examples of this family are rice wheat maize sugarcane sarcanda barley etc thank you